Yes, there's been a great controversy raising, raging in the country uh, lately over the subject of a sex education film, and it's raised the old question of whether sex should be taught to children uh, at all or not in the public schools. And we've invited two English uh, citizens, two uh, citizens of the British Isles. Um, they'll tell you who they are, or maybe it will become clear as they talk. Uh, let me throw this open to either one of you two people. Uh, what do you feel is a proper age for uh, a child to begin learning about uh, reproduction? Two. <laughs> you know, I, I, I must take issue with you on, on that. Two, I think, is a little early. Uh, I think a child should first be introduced to the very real and beautiful and wonderful thing that sex can be within the confines of a loving relationship, within the confines of marriage, and within oh. the confines of a house, but I would put the age at um, something like 35. Um, <laughs> when the child is really ready to appreciate uh, the, the, the finer things in life. Yeah. I mean, I think sex is terribly important. Yes. In fact, I think I'd better pop off now. <laughs> I think it's terribly important. Mm. Without it, I doubt if any of us would have been here this evening uh, to have this very interesting discussion. Mm. But I don't think you should shove sex down uh, people's throats <laughs> at uh, an early age. I, I see. Would you agree with any of that, uh, sir? I, uh, you come from very different backgrounds, I assume. No, basically the same background. <laughs> uh, no, I disagree with probably all of that. Uh, I think that uh, sex should be uh, ruled out altogether. Ruled out? I think there ought to be legislation in the parliamentary uh, places <laughs> to uh, pull out this thorn in the side of the British public. Uh, it's scarcely in the side of the British public. <laughs> uh... I oh. think this is where you've been going wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout a lot of your life. No, but I, I, th I think uh, I agree with him that mm. um, it, it is a very tricky problem, sex. Um, I've read a lot of these books which give you diagrams of the female form and what particular places to grab hold of <laughs> and uh, whatever particular hour of the evening is um, suggested in the book. <laughs> and. Um, I, the book I read was uh, published in 1910, <laughs> and um, I was very shocked by it, because it suggested that towards the end of dinner, you should lean over and touch an unmarried young lady's, no, let's not mince our words, finger. <laughs> and oh, caress it, goodness. caress it under the, can under the candlelight. <laughs> And miss, moving quickly on. <laughs> <laughs> moving quickly on from here. Yeah, we, yeah. Um, would you say, either of you, that early experiences in your own life shaped your views uh, toward the subject? <laughs> yeah. of... <laughs> so I've, I've struck a rich vein here. Um, but one constantly reads in Freud case histories of uh, children being traumatized by uh, the wrong kind of contact with them. Uh, well, I had this about... appalling experience when I was very young uh, in that my. <laughs> The room was invaded by Freud <laughs> <laughs> at four o'clock in the morning, saying, young man or young woman, I don't care who or what you are, but I need help. <laughs> and um, I was only, what, I was about 32 then. And um, I was in a bit of a dilemma. Grew up in Vienna, did you? And then the famous Dr. Freud himself. Uh, the Wiener, the Wiener Philosophore. <laughs> uh, no, yes, I was brought up in Vienna and brought down in Vienna by um, Dr. Freud. <laughs> his uh, appalling attack on me in, in this small room. I, I, expect I hate to defame his memory, but the truth must out. Freud was a... Uh... He was, um, let's say, not altogether a happy man. <laughs> <laughs> to resort to me, he must have been at the end of his tether, <laughs> which I was shortly after that. <laughs> That's rather obscure. Do you feel, then, either of you, that your lives would have been different if you had had sex in school uh, talked to you? I had sex in school, yes. Uh, oh, I pick I mean, of course, had you studied the subject, had you? Uh, oh. Had it been offered as part of your curriculum when you matriculated? Well, Mrs. Kiss, 
uh, used to give us a... We had a teacher called Mrs Kiss. <laughs> no, it can be told. Muses you still. No, it can't, no. no. But, no, we had a teacher called Mrs Kiss. Mm -hmm. I, it was funny at the time. But, anyway, no, she used to um, teach us, you know, uh, down by the wooden uh, buildings. Did, did, did she use visual aids in, in her teaching? Yes. She used to undress, I imagine. <laughs> yes. yes we probably saw that. There was a case of that, actually. In this film being shown to children, uh, there is a certain amount of nudity which shocked a number of your countrymen. It certainly shocked me. I, in all my life, and I'm happy to say that I'm happily married eight times, um, <laughs> eight wives, 96 children, but I'm happy to say that I've never seen an unclad female form. Well, a number of questions popped to mind, um, <clears throat> all of which I've rejected. Uh, Might put me right off, you see. Yes, I... I it's I, those I, tweed skirts which get me going. They're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the tweed skirts with the vent. Yes, that's it. <laughs> um, it's rather warm in here. Uh, let me just ask you one final question. Can you remember, as children, where you were told babies um, came from? I was told, very frankly, at the age of 32, <laughs> that babies came out of mummy's bottom. <laughs> and I've never had reason to question that. <laughs> Would anyone in the audience like to ask a question? Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know where to... Um, but we'll be back <laughs> after... Uh, uh, tomorrow, next week, our subject will be public transportation, and I'm sure it will be a lot easier for all of us. Here's a way to make all your stubborn wrinkles disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Sunbeam, wherever they are, watch, we'll be right back. Oh, um.